What's going on everyone? Juice Bags here and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. It is time to take the bees out to the Wild West here. I need me some more mod reroll tokens and uh, headed out here to get them, but I wanted to use something a little different. Uh, one of the interesting things about the bees is with the recent changes to like the Nimbus and the Dragon's Nest, the bees still have a maximum range of 6,000, so they've got a very nice range. Uh, with this in mind, though, remember travel time actually hurts the bees, so you are going to be wanting to use fleeting nature in the mix. Uh, obviously, a gilded version would be better than what I'm using here, but this one will get the job done just fine. Along with that, stack it up mass destruction and destruction with anti-melee, anti-chaos, and defense rate. I've got a little bit of a hybrid tree growing on here. Uh, not full damage, yet not full wall either. It's kind of a mix. Um, using Juggernaut Automation and Thick Vines with uh, Anti-Chaos, Anti-Melee, and Defense Range on a Godly Range Totem. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see what we can do. Um, I think we want lots of Thick Vines going up here, even though we're not uh, really setting them up properly for damage. Um, we are going to be getting some damage out of them. So we are going to go a little heavy on the Thick Vines. And then I think that will leave me enough for maybe six, six bees. Now, as I mentioned, the bees do go out to 6,000 range. So the range on them is quite nice. Uh, let's get a boost R in there. Make sure we're hitting those trees with the boost as well. And then oh, let's get all the other bells and whistles in. So we need to give them a buff. And then I've got destructive pylon on my reflect beams now. So we need to give them some destructive pylon as well. Now, with that in mind, uh, we also do need a reflect up front for these trees. We'll go something like that. And um, yeah, I think that'll get the job done. Now, taking a look at the bees here with this setup, uh, they are at the range cap um, with the uh, diffusion and the range pylon. And if we take a look at the range, it goes out there pretty nice. Uh, it's going past these spawns and right to about here. So definitely getting some nice range out of the deal. Uh, let's do the same thing uh, here on every lane. So we'll get, uh, let's see, how do we want these trees? Let's go uh, with our trees and then our bees with the six stack once again. Going to be a little uh, suspect here on this one. We're getting the buff beam down, I believe. Let's see, can I get my... Uh, Boostar and now uh, let's move these back just a tiny bit. Uh, that way I got room for the Boostar. In fact, we can just go ahead and get that Boostar in first. Uh, something like that. There we go. And then we'll be it up. I think that's good and then uh let's see let's see if we can oh, yeah it looks like we'll be able to sneak it in still get our reflect beam snuck in we need our uh our pylons and then let's get our protective reflect beam down for our trees very very nice and then up here what do we do up here well we got uh we got a truckload of du left so we can pretty much do the same thing so let's go three, three trees. We'll get our uh, six bees. Hmm. Yeah, I think we can still get six in right here. Now here they definitely will be all the way up into that spawn. So they'll be hitting the enemies just as soon as they come out here. Uh, without a doubt. We'll get our uh, reflect in. And our protective reflect beam. See, we actually got enough DU. Let's give these guys a little bit of side overlap. Something... Something like that, maybe, just in case uh, we get any side shots going there. And then that is going to leave me enough for a little uh, help with the flyer. So, let's just get a sky guard down. Uh, we'll give the sky guard all the range stuff. So we'll give it diffusion and we'll give it a um, range pylon and destructive pylon as well. Leaves 20, uh, 20 DU left, which I don't feel like I really need to spend. 
Let's just drop uh, a couple of upgrades there on bees. We'll drop a couple of here, and let's just let it fly. Now, through wave one, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to DPS a bit. The downside of bees is, although multiple bees will hit one enemy, they are a single target defense, so your bees can get overwhelmed. This map, of course, does have a decent mob count, and they come down in some nice packs. So with that in mind, you're going to want to make sure to, uh, you know, get your upgrades in, get stuff cleared out appropriately. Uh, anytime there's packs really stacking up, uh, give a little help and uh, should have no problems at all. With your Venus. Actually doing kind of better than I thought. We are getting a little build up over here. And then we got a little sneaky skelly action going on the side. Definitely not my first choice as far as like a chill build or any sort of AFK setup. But for active play, uh, the bees work just fine and they're super fun to use. It's always nice to spam out some bees and have them buzzing around the map, tearing up all these baddies. Getting a little build up over here again as well. As long as your trees are holding out, you're going to be good. And the trees are holding out strong, so. Not uh, an ideal tree setup. You know, you're, of course, you're always going to get more benefit if you go all one way or the other. Uh, you can still get, you can go full tank wall and still get effective use out of your thick vines uh, for sure. But in this hybrid setup, they won't be in their uh, their best form. Well, we should be all right. Looks like it cleared through the first lane. No problems. I was expecting uh, things to bunch up a little bit more. Let's get a little damage in on these flyers. Just to get everybody burned out. And a couple more. There we go. So not really going to focus on even upgrades. Just going to kind of spam them out. So get some upgrades in. Of course, if you upgrade your trees, you're going to get more value out of thick vines. So definitely want to keep that in mind. But most importantly, I want my reroll tokens. So I don't want this map to take all day. Um, now with that in mind, remember the further you push this setup out, the more at risk it's going to be. But additionally, the faster the map is going to run. So you kind of have to pick your sweet spot there as far as where do you want it. Like, I wouldn't put it past uh, the benches here, as that's just where the side lanes spawn, so that's a, just a really good place to have them. But if you did have the bees set up right here, and then the trees, like, maybe right there, you would get a little bit more... Um, you, you're, you'd shave off some time as far as the runtime for completing this one. What did that first wave take? Uh, including the build time, we're about eight minutes in. So it took eight minutes to build and run uh, one and a quarter waves. We got some sneaky chiefs. Little sneaky chiefs coming down the sides. And then, you know, obviously it wouldn't be all dryad focused, but... I mean, if you added something in to knock back or knock up the Chieftains, like a Mystic Wall or an Earth Shatter Tower, uh, or if you've got an Abyss Lord playing actively in your group, I mean, you can keep those Chieftains just really nowhere near uh, doing anything to you. So, of course, that would require uh, changing up the build a little bit. Then I think this wave will dump most of the upgrades in on this side. The one area where I don't pay as much attention to is up here. And one of the reasons being as soon as the enemies start spawning, the bees are smacking. So with that in mind, you know, their entire, the enemy's entire existence is with bees buzzing around their face. Let's see, we got the Skelly push, and then the Flyers, and, uh, should be GG's. I 
And one more flyer group down. There we go. Alright, so a couple waves went pretty smooth um, all together. Let's spam upgrades into this lane now. Uh, looking good. And then let's go ahead and jump on forward to wave number five. And see how everything's holding up all the way back here at the end. All right, and here we go in wave number five. So I basically I dumped one wave's worth of mana pretty much into every lane. Uh, I think for the last um, upgrade uh, route here, we'll go over here since this one has uh, double bosses there for the end. And then we'll just let it fly here. We got that like Kelly on, of course. He actually came pretty early, but... I've been focusing on getting that guy wrecked. I didn't upgrade my trees, which, you know, you upgrade your trees. Not only do you get more health, you also get more range, uh, which makes thick vines do even better. So definitely a good idea to upgrade your trees. However, I just spammed it all into the bees for this one here. And getting it done for the most part. Uh, we are getting chieftain at the walls as expected, and then... An occasional bit of uh, frost orc build up, but not nothing really too terrible. Uh, a few zerks making it down the road, of course. What do we got? We got us a siege roller. It's like the lanes are pretty thin overall. We got the short lane siege roller here. Just go ahead and get him slapped. I'll siege roller down. The chieftain's immunity bubble is already popped and spent normally by the time it makes it to the walls. So, I mean, that's a good thing for sure. Just about there. Still 200 mobs left, but so many of those uh, final mobs in the lane are that there's that big skelly push, and then the flyers at the very end. Looks like it's about 150 mobs altogether. There's still a chieftain here. Looks like he's pat. No, he was just about dead anyway. Yeah, the skellies and flyers. Uh, we got Gribs rolling out a little late. We got a Tuscar over here. Got wrecked pretty quick. Let's see how Gribs does. Yeah, see, the bees do provide that single target. I mean, they will shred. Uh, there's no doubt. But it's the, the enemy of the bee is too many targets. So too many targets, the bees lose a bit of their effectiveness. We'll give it the old, uh, we'll give it the old boss test here. So see how they do against the bosses. It's never really a good idea, and it makes the map run quicker if you just kill the bosses. But I'm always curious to see how the defenses are going to handle the bosses. Throw a few more rando upgrades in. Let's see. Let's get a few rando upgrades over here. Looks like that's all we can do. And let's uh, check it out. We do have that Slakelion. Let me kill the Slakelion, and then I'll leave the regular bosses to the bees here. All right, you see the Huntress is burning super fast. Uh, the Monk... The Monk is getting beat up on. Uh, they're actually Monk down. Yeah, so, I mean, the bees really, really shine with that single target damage. Now, you see the Apprentice went out of range. So now we're going to have the Apprentice in the pack. It looks like the bees are still going to get it done. Now we lost a World Tree over here. Was that from the... Or no, there we go. We got him. Looks like uh, something got a little close here, assuming it may have been the Squire. And we lost uh, one of the trees. But, like I said, the bees really, really shine as far as single target damage. Uh, and their weakness is having too many targets. Uh, so that's kind of where Thick Vines helps out as well. Is it allows, um, you know, some general pack clearing of the squishier mobs. 
even with a less than ideal setup like this, can still do really well. But let's check out our uh, Max Roll Snakeskin Armor. You know it's in the box, y'all. It's got to be here, right? All right, no snakeskin this time around. But uh, anyway, there we go. Bees in the Wild West. So thanks a ton for watching. And I will see you next time around. Take it easy.